All right, so we have studied um, where functions are increasing and decreasing, so now we're going to learn a new term, and we're going to look at concavity of a graph. And simply concavity of a graph refers to the property of a function that is either curving upward or downward. So that is referred to as being concave up or concave down. So you can think of it if you're um, bending, so um, bending the curve, if I had you make it out of wire or something, when it bends, when you're building it and it's bending up, then it's concave up, and then when you switch to bending it down, that's concave down. The graph of a function is concave up on an interval where the first derivative of the graph is increasing, and the graph of a function is concave down on an interval if the first derivative is decreasing. A curve that is concave up lies above its tangent. So in other words, let's say we had a parabola. So if I ask you to bend this parabola with wire, it is, we'd have to bend it up. And the curve lies above its tangent. So if I said draw the tangent anywhere at any one of the points, the curve is above its tangent. So it's concave up. Whereas a curve that is concave down, so for example this parabola, um, it is concave down when um, the curve lies below its tangent lines. So if we draw tangent lines to this curve, notice how the curve is below the tangent lines that we draw. So then it's concave down. So when we do tests for concavity, um, we are going to look at the second derivative of the function and if the second derivative is oops, I forgot to grab my pen. If the second derivative is positive, then the function is concave up on that interval. And if the second derivative is less than zero or negative on an interval, then the function is concave down. So we're going to use that because a lot of times, like if you're just looking at the graph, it's easy enough to see when you'd bend it up or when you bend it down. So it's pretty easy to do a visual test, but we're going to use this to do an analytic test. Okay, so we're going to use the second derivative. So now we're going to take a look at what are the steps then in testing to see whether there's concave up or concave down. So you're going to locate the x values at which the second derivative is either 0 or undefined. We're going to use those intervals. It's kind of similar to the first derivative test when we were um, testing to see if it's increasing or decreasing. But we just take it another step then to determine whether it's concave up or concave down. So you use those x values then to determine the test intervals, and then you test the signs where you plug the test points into the second derivative. Okay? So let's see if we apply this test to the function f of x is equal to x squared. All right, it said... Find the second derivative. So our first derivative is 2x. Our second derivative is 2. Well, it's always positive. I can't set it equal to 0. It's never undefined. So that means the second derivative is always positive. So that means it is concave up over the entire graph. And if we draw it, 
when we're bending it out of wire, we would be bending it up over the whole thing. Okay, so that's kind of how, that's a very simple one to do. Let's go from extremely simple to kind of complicated. So let's take this function here. So we want to determine, um, find where this is concave up and concave down. I'm going to give you this ugly function here. Let's go with f of x is equal to 6 over x squared plus 3. All right, we got to do the second derivative. Probably on this one, I am going to change the look of it so I don't have to do the quotient rule. So now I'm going to use the chain rule here. So we want to do our first derivative. So our first derivative negative 6 times this to 1 less power times the derivative of the inside function. Alright, let's change that back to a fraction. So it looks like we're going to have a negative 12x over the quantity x squared plus 3 squared. Alright. Now, I think I'll just leave it like that then. I could um, kind of do like we did that first one and do the product rule. Let's just do the quotient rule. So now we're looking at the second derivative. So I take the denominator. Times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So to get that derivative, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So it's 2 times the function to 1 less power, so that'll be 1 times the derivative of the inside. That is all over the denominator squared. So this will be raised to the fourth power. All right, to simplify this fraction, I'm going to take out what this and this has in common. So what they have in common looks like is a negative 12 and an x squared plus 3 to the first power. When I take it out, notice this negative 12 is gone. And then I'm going to get rid of this negative 12 here. And over here, this is going to be completely gone. And this is going to be raised to the first power. So we have left x squared plus 3 minus, I've got a 2 times a 2, times an x, times this x here. So I get minus 4x squared. It is all over still the x squared plus 3 to the 4th. So because this x squared um, is a factor in the numerator, I can cancel one of them out, and that'll change to a third power. So, what we have left then, we have a, still have that negative 12 on the outside. We have x squared plus 3 minus 4x squared, so that's going to give us negative 3x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 3 quantity cubed. Alright. Ok, 
Okay, there's a couple of things we can do here. You know, we can distribute through that negative 12 and then pull out what we have in common. But let's just, I'm going to um, just take out that 3. And um, I think I'll go ahead and take out a negative 3. So we have a negative 12 already there. I'm going to take out an additional negative 3. And then I'm going to be left with x squared minus 1. Hopefully that made sense. When I combine these two, negative 12 times negative 3, I get a 36. Alright, so that's what our function looks like there. So that is our second derivative. So I want to take that. I want to look to see where it's undefined. It is, when I look at this denominator, it's never going to be undefined because anytime I square something, I'm going to get a positive. And so therefore, it's never going to equal zero. So um, I'm just concerned with where it is equal to zero. And when a fraction is equal to zero, it's just when the numerator is equal to zero. So if I set the numerator equal to zero, we see that x could equal a positive one or x could equal a negative one by factoring that out. So, once again, when I set that second derivative equal to zero, I got my critical values of x is equal to a plus or minus one, and it was not undefined. So, that is going to give us, I'm going to move this now to another screen because we're kind of running out of room here, so I got a blank screen here, but I have to plug those points into the second derivative. Alright, so I'm going to rewrite that second derivative on this next page. So our second derivative all simplified out was this. And it was x squared minus 1, so I can go plus 1 minus 1 all over and then we had our critical values at plus or minus one alright so that's going to give us got two critical values that's going to give us three intervals so negative infinity to negative one one negative one to positive one and positive 1 to positive infinity. So let's take a test point in each one. How about a negative 2 here, a 0 here, and a 2 here? I'm going to plug that into my second derivative. Okay, so when I plug in a negative 2, we get a negative times a negative on top, so that's a positive. In the denominator, we get a positive. So I came up with a positive. So that means that it is concave up. Okay. If I plug in a 0, in the numerator I have one negative. So when I multiply, that's going to be a negative, And the denominator is going to be a positive, so I get negative there. So on that interval, it is concave down. And then on the last one, when I plug in a 2, I get positives all in the numerator, positive in the denominator, so that gives me a positive. So on that interval, it is concave up once again. Okay? All right. Now, points of inflection are, well, if I look at, if I take a look at this, it says, if the tangent line to a graph exists at a point where the concavity changes, then the point is a point of inflection. Okay, let's see if we can draw that out, see what that means. So, if I go from concave up to concave down, and my tangent line exists, 
So like at that point where I switched drawing it, my tangent line does exist right there, then that point is a point of inflection. Okay, let's say that I go from concave down to concave up and my tangent line. Um, exists there. This time it would look probably more like that. So those two points, this point right here and this point right here would be referred to as, as points of inflection. So now let's see if we can find the point of inflection. So the first thing we're going to do is find the second derivative. So we got to find the first derivative first. Here we just have to use the whoops, simple power rule. That should be a minus. second derivative we want to set those equal to zero let's factor out a six now if I factor that 2x minus 1, x plus 1, 2x minus, yeah. All right, so that means x could equal 1 half or x could equal a negative 1. All right, so my intervals then. Um, less, the negative 1 is going to be on the left, so we go negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to a half, and a half to positive infinity. So I'm going to take test points. Let's do negative 2, 0, and 1. And if I plug it into that second derivative, so at that point, or in that interval, it is... Um, okay, negative 2. So I'm going to get a negative times a negative times a positive. So it's a positive. So that means it is concave up. In this interval, substitute in a 0, I'm going to get one negative in there. So it's going to be negative. So that means it's concave down. If I plug in a 1, it looks like it's all positive. So it is concave up again. So I am changing from concave up to concave down at the point negative 1. So that means negative 1 is a point of inflection. And if it says actually find the point, then you have to take that negative 1 and plug it into the original function. And if you plug it in up there, I believe you're going to get a negative 2. Okay, over here at the half, at one half, we went from concave down to concave up, so we have a point of inflection there. To find the actual point, you take the one half, plug it into the original function here, and if you plug it in, I came up with 7 sixteenths, and maybe you could verify that on your own. But we have two points of inflection on that graph. All right, the second derivative test. So the second derivative test says if you take the second derivative and you plug those critical values in and it's a positive number, then at that point it is a relative minimum. 
All right, so we're taking the second derivative, and if the second derivative is positive, so if it's positive, that means it's concave up, so we have a relative minimum. If the second derivative is less than zero, that means it's negative, so that means it's uh, concave down. So you're bending it down, so you're going to have a relative maximum. And if the second derivative test, if it fails, then you can't use that to determine whether it's a minimum or a maximum. You'd have to go back and use your first derivative test. All right, let's try it with this guy, see what happens. So we got to find the second derivative. First one. Negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared. Okay. Well, we're going to use that. We use our first derivative to find our um, critical points. So the first derivative, if we set that equal to zero, so I'm going to take out a negative 15x squared. So then I get x squared minus 1. So I get critical values. So we're saying that equal to 0. So I have critical values at 0, at 1, and at negative 1. Okay, so we're going to use those values in just a little bit. But now we've got to go back and finish up by doing our second derivative. Okay, so our second derivative, negative 60x to the third plus 30x. Okay, so if I plug into that second derivative, if I plug in, let's start with the negative 1. Okay, if I plug in a negative 1, I get a positive 60 minus 30. So I get a positive number. So that means that we have a minimum at that point. Okay? If I plug into my second derivative, the 0, so we're going in order from negative, the lowest number to the highest. So if I plug in a 0, I get a 0. So it's not positive or negative. So, like, the test fails there. And if I plug in a positive 1 into that second derivative, I get a negative 60 plus a positive 30, so I get a negative number. So that means I have a maximum at that point. Okay? So that's what that second derivative test is for. All right, with that, hopefully then that's going to be enough for you guys to try some problems that are kind of similar to that. So on this one, on this first one, this is the function that I want. So let's go with f of x is equal to 24 over x squared plus 12. So this is going to be that fun one, doing that second derivative. All right, and then you have these other two. Okay, that should be pretty good. So good luck with those. Make sure and work them. Don't wimp out on me. Let's get those done. All right, see you in class.